السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ladies and gentlemen continue our computational fluid dynamics CFD uh, tutorials uh, in this video we're gonna talk about a very important uh, application is uh, cooling the uh, photovoltaic uh, panel but uh, not using uh, fans uh, we're gonna use another uh, idea we're gonna use the air uh, cooling uh, method but using the air duct method it is somehow uh, different uh, from the other uh, method that we talked about here with cooling a PV panel uh, using rips and we talked about uh, many things in this, in this tutorial so please watch it uh, if you did not uh, watch it okay Now uh, there are uh, there is another uh, idea, or another uh, many ideas here from this paper. You can use here is the uh, PV uh, without uh, any cooling systems, just the uh, glass and solar cell and the tiller. And here is another idea: is uh, using the air duct. To uh, cool the uh, PV using, and the, here is uh, the insulation, and another idea is the above duct, uh, above duct and uh, lower duct. So, how can we uh, do these uh, simulations? Here we have uh, a tutorial from uh, ANSYS companies, one-way uh, data transfer using system coupling, but this tutorial was uh, about the review of physics settings and mechanical, okay, uh, to thermal diffusion, we have here a coil, this coil is immersed in water, okay, so uh, we want to investigate the uh, heat that will be transferred to uh, the water. So how can we do this? First of all, we use the uh, thermal steady state. Why? To calculate the temperature of the coil. The coil, German, is solid. It's a solid, it is not a fluid. That's why we have to uh, use ANSYS steady state thermal or, the, or ANSYS mechanical and we define the internal heat generation, convection, and fluid solid interface, and these uh, things, and to get the temperature. Okay, after this, you can watch this tutorial uh, on YouTube. After this, you uh, start the setting uh, of fluent. Why to uh, prepare it for, uh, or to define the water domain? Here is the uh, water domain, and we're gonna transfer the heat generated by the coil into uh, this water domain and we're gonna, you can use these steps after the convergence you will see here the temperature the distribution of the uh, the effect of the heat of the coil uh, on the water so this is an idea but we're gonna use another idea why because we want to cool the PV so we're gonna you uh, investigate now the effect of the air on the PV okay so we're gonna use fluent at first to solve the air domain and then we can import the temperature distribution uh, into steady state thermal to investigate the effect okay so before to know uh, the effect, we must compare between the two simulations. So we're gonna use uh, this case at first. It will be uh, as the same as uh, what we have said in this tutorial. So let's start. But before this, uh, the solar radiation here, the solar engineering thermal processes. Uh, it's a very important uh, reference. Please check it out. Why to know about uh, the solar uh, models and how you uh, can calculate the solar radiation, uh, I total, uh, I direct, I diffuse, I reflected at a special on a special day. 
it depends on many uh, angles the sun angles and the uh, tilt angle of the PV once you get the eye tool you can use it in the simulation uh, I'm gonna talk about this now and here please you have to check out the answers to the uh, uh, answers mechanical or thermal analysis guide I've talked about it uh, in this tutorial and that tutorial previous tutorial okay and here radiation I think it's used for uh, the radiation between two a surface to another surface and in steady state thermal uh, you use it to uh, the initialization or you don't have to uh, use the transient okay so here in our uh, project so the steady state thermal uh, please watch this tutorial I talked about uh, entering the data of each uh, component in details here the glass okay and here the insulation or PV cell or structure steer or uh, the tiddler or these kind of things okay uh, you have to uh, know how to add these things and this is the important thing or the uh, good thing when you deal with the steady state thermal ANSYS mechanical uh, in general you can uh, add each component uh, as a solid here we cannot I think we, uh, it's better to do this here so after importing the here are the class cover and the PV cell and the tiller I'm not gonna use the insulation after defining we have here the glass cover and the cell and the tiddler okay uh, add frozen add frozen here is add frozen because we uh, have many uh, materials or different materials after finishing this so we define the engineering data and then import the geometry and I just du duplicate it so open it for meshing and here is our model just wait uh, first of all, you must check the uh, materials. We find it structure steel, structure steel, structure steel. We do not do one of this. Just here for the glass, PV cell, and here the tabular. Okay, thanks. And here is the mesh. I'm gonna make it fine. I'm gonna use the default settings for this tutorial just to uh, just a tutorial, but please you must uh, carry out a mesh dependence study, of course. Here are the statistics and the quality and also the skewness. Skewness, I think, uh, is not important here. Uh, here are the maximum skewness. Okay, it's very small. Why? Because there's uh, rectangle uh, squares. Okay. And here are the initial temperature. I'm going to use it 27, 300 Kelvin. Analysis, uh, we may initialize the solution, so I'm gonna make it because it's steady, we can make it one second, okay. And uh, 
and here you can add convection just run the simulation the convection of these surface these surfaces all the surfaces that are exposed to the outside air of course it depends on the experiment that you you carry out it is not a random choice Please be careful because uh, if the thickness is uh, very small, you will not be able to select it uh, without uh, the high zoom. Be sure that you selected all the surfaces, please. Okay, plus 14 faces. And here a thermal coefficient for stagnant air. Stagnant air, you can use stagnant air, you can select these things or you can guess it or calculate it or according to your experiment so I'm gonna make it uh, 10 or uh, tramped or you make it tabular it uh, may be 10 here also it is 10 here or you can uh, change the uh, values according to the table as you like and we need the temperature the previous tutorial uh, we talked about how to uh, make monitors so if you wanna make your props uh, check out the previous tutorial now just we're gonna solve the simulation just to initialize it to be then to be used I'm sorry, uh, here is, I'm gonna do this for the, uh, here is the steady state without cooling, okay, we're gonna use the heat flux, the heat flux, uh, here we have from this paper, or according to the, here the solar radiation will hit the glass cover, okay, so this is the glass cover face, okay, we're gonna use, 8 watt per meter, but it's not rampant, tabular. Uh, if the solar radiation uh, changes with time, okay, you can change here, but we're gonna use it as fixed value. Okay, then just to solve. So we have heat flux and convection. I'm gonna pause uh, the tutorial now, please, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, gentlemen, the temperature of the PV is 67521. Uh, uh, here is 63. Uh, of course, it uh, uh, depends on the, the materials you use and the convection. So let's try another convection to check out it's if it is uh, 15 so what's gonna happen if it's 15 if you increase the convection
So the values of the uh, experiment here, of course, depends on the air velocity and many things. So notice that the temperature uh, here uh, decreases due to increasing the convection or the heat transfer by convection, 54 and it is 50, the minimum and uh, the maximum. Okay, this is the steady state solution. What if we want to uh, check out the solution after 60 seconds? Or something like this, just to get the transient thermal. And share it with the steady state solution. Just open the setup. Notice that you will find the convection and heat flux uh, already without any problem. And here the initial temperature, it will be uh, used uh, from the uh, previous tutorial. Here we're gonna use 60 seconds. I need number of steps, okay, it's one. And here we're gonna Add the same here for the convection. The same faces. Fourteen face. Just be careful, please. Look. Must be 14 faces. And make it and the temperature just 27 and the same heat flux that simulate the solar radiation where the heat flux here heat flux is this okay it will be the same for the same phase Tabular. Through the 60 seconds, it will not change. After one minute. You see? Okay. Now we need the temperature after 60 seconds. Just state solve. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, here gentlemen is uh, the solution after one minute. Notice that uh, there is no uh, changes uh, as we uh, already uh, done. We have already done in this Tutorial, we uh, have seen that uh, the transit solution does not uh, cha is not different from the steady source. Okay, for this uh, PV now, 
Now we're gonna talk about how to cool this PV, but not without the fins that we used the previous uh, time. So, just take a snapshot, compare. And here is without cooling one. Without cooling two. Okay, just close. Now we want to investigate the uh, air duct effect. So we, uh, I need here to generate the air duct. The air duct is a fluid, is not solid, so we have to use fluid. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Well, you can share the geometry uh, directly from this uh, project or from this uh, simulation to Fluent. Okay, it's the same. I just want to do something to make the coordinates uh, suitable or compatible with the static uh, with the steady state thermal. Okay, we're gonna use fluent. Just gonna use fluent here. Okay. I'm gonna share the geometry. After sharing the geometry, I don't need this or even the copy. Just delete it. We have here the simulation and the transient of it. Okay, just open the geometry. So this uh, reference shows you uh, many things and you can use it to calculate the solar radiation uh, the analytical way or you can directly measure it to use it for the simulation. Uh, we have here uh, gentlemen the okay we do not need the insulation okay but now I wanna what I'm gonna do now is we have here the glass, the PV cell, and the tiddler. Okay, the same way, but we need to uh, generate the air duct. Okay, and here is the air duct. The air duct will be uh, right here. So we're gonna make. my z just generate a plane insert projection so this edge
and a new sketch. And we're gonna get a rectangle. Dimensions is five hundred. Okay. Of course, uh, you must know the thickness of the air duct, but I'm gonna use a random thickness now. Here, I'm gonna use uh, a random uh, value is three uh, millimeters. Okay, and we're gonna extrude the sketch. Okay, and we're gonna make it at frozen uh, balls. Okay. And we have here the air duct. Okay, the air duct is right behind uh, the tiddler. This is the tiddler. glass and PV cell, tiddler and the uh, insulation no and here is the solid okay so here is the solid and here is the tiddler okay this is the air of course now I do not need all these things so we're gonna suppress them so now we have here the air duct okay Just I'm gonna reset it. Okay, gentlemen, uh, after this, please open the geometry again to uh, just to be sure of the uh, fluid solid interface that I need to calculate its temperature. Then I can import it into ANSYS Steady Thermal. Okay, so uh, where is the tiddler? The tiddler is here. Okay, and X, Y, and Z. Okay, so X, Y, and Z, and here is the FSI. So this is FSI, fluid so, uh, solid interface, and we may uh, suppose that this is the inlet and this is the outlet. Okay. Yes the outlet and here the FSI and we're gonna use the mesh uh, make it fine and then update it uh, here for filament or CFX the screwness must not exceed 0 0.98 or you will not get the right solution you will find divergence and here is the number of cells. The quality, uh, the spoon is here. I think that is very small because uh, the, fish, the mesh is uh, fine, as you see. But please, you also must uh, carry out a mesh dependency study for fluent because I think this is not uh, good accuracy. But I'm gonna uh, exceed now, proceed now. And here are the setup. Now we have the air inlet outlet. The double precision it uh, depends on the digits or it uh, affects the di the digits 
or a point uh, until eight zeros, I think. So it increases the accuracy. I only have four processors, so I can make it three. Now we're gonna uh, use these. Fluent, we have Reynolds one meter per second multiplied by 0.1.225. Uh, the air density multiplied by the characteristic length 0.03 or 3 millimeters divided by the air dynamic viscosity. 1.8 at 300 Kelvin 846 divided by to the power negative 5 this is 1990.7 so it is laminar steady models uh, we have here energy equation this is the most the most important thing here and the uh, materials is gonna be air and so zones air of course air uh, it doesn't matter what the name is the type is the most important it may be solid here as a name but it's fluid okay no dynamic mesh the boundary condition fsi We have here to make it 300 Kelvin for the inlet. And here also the thermal. Just one meter per second and the outlet, the pressure. Thermal, okay, please be sure. If you uh, have atmospheric pressure, make it zero gauge. If you have any other uh, number or from the experiment, of course, uh, you can make it here. And that's it. Also, you can set all things that you need here. 100 Kelvin if you are pretty sure okay interior is interior it's interior it's interior fluid okay uh, the methods simple this square uh, cell based uh, due to the structure mesh if you uh, triangular mesh you choose a node based this is better you can check that out uh, from the uh, access theory guide. Uh, for the monitors, you can increase the accuracy. Of the conversions. And uh, for profiles, you can make monitors, but I'm not gonna do it now. Just initialize the solution. Find the very good conversions and the activities. We can auto save uh, the simulation every uh, number of iterations. Uh, the lower the uh, number, the high frame, the most, the more frames you get for the animations. Now, now I'm gonna see the state. Just calculate. Okay, gentlemen, here is the uh, convergence. Well, the calculation is completed. Why? Because it is a very, very simple uh, problem. Let's check out the contours of the temperature of the FSI. Just displayed it. 
just 300 Kelvin, okay. That's what I want. In close. Now just duplicate. I am duplicating uh, this cell to get the same engineering data. So uh, now we are the uh, solution. Just share it with the setup. Okay. Also, uh, you can reset the setup. Okay. And starting mechanical, the same engineering data, the same uh, geometry of the PV. Now I'm gonna check out the uh, effect of the air duct. Please, you uh, must see imported load. Okay, we have here the initial temperature at 27, uh, analysis type, okay, one second, and here the imported load, this is the most important thing that I need, here the temperature, so overall, overall progress. So now uh, the geometry selection is where is the tiddler, please. Geometry class. Just let me see it. Okay, have here the glass, PV cell, and the tiddler. Uh, remember that we uh, get the FSI between the tiddler here and the air duct, so the tiller, the geometry selection is this face. Okay, uh, what I need now is to get the FSI temperature. Okay, just click an import load. For the insulation, I'm gonna drop it uh, now just for simplicity. Uh, I only care about the temperature of the PV uh, cell. So let's see what is gonna happen. So now is the temperature from fluent, and here is this is the contact between the air duct and the uh, tiddler. And now we're gonna uh, get the temperature. I will not gonna add anything now, just solve it to initialize it for the uh, transient uh, simulation. It is not like the steady state 
simulation that we have just done without cooling? No. Uh, here I'm gonna use the steady state thermal as initialization for the transient. So I only need the uh, the uh, temperature, and then we can add the convection and the uh, solar radiation later. So here the temperature does not did not change. Okay, it's twenty. Uh, 300 uh, Kelvin just for the air duct without any solar radiation okay close it and get a transient share it please sorry it's not easy okay we're gonna uh, share it with this solution of the steady state we, are, we have here the transient open the setup starting mechanical Opening, we'll find here the uh, product load, okay, the temperature from the previous simulation, initial temperature, it is going to be uh, the uh, temperature of the last simulation, the analysis here, I want to check out after 60 seconds, and here we're going to use the convection, the exactly the convection that we used for this face and this face zoom in it's gonna be 13 faces why we're not gonna use the face that uh, is the FSI I do not need it now Thirteen faces. We're gonna use fifteen and twenty-seven. Also, here is tabular. If we do not, it's constant. Okay, leave it as it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, where are the glass? This is the glass. Okay. We're gonna add the solar radiation the heat flux also it is 108 it's not step applied Okay. And now we're gonna use the thermal temperature contrast state solve. Now I'm gonna compare the results with the uh, previous simulation. 
I will be right back. Okay, gentlemen, here is the uh, results. Here is the result. Uh, the are the results. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> clear that the air duct played a very uh, good role in cooling this uh, PV. Notice that we have here. We have here 54 as maximum. Now we have 38. So 54 minus 38, we decrease the, the temperature by 16. Of course, uh, you have to uh, carry out an experiment and be sure of everything. I'm just showing you the effect of the cooling of the air duct. We have here a very good uh, temperature distribution. Why we have here the temperature uh, began with 26 and then uh, this is due, due to the effect of the cooling okay and we have here the uh, convection the same convection here the same heat flux but we have here another temperature why because uh, due to the uh, air duct so you can also apply the other methods can use two air ducts uh, here close space and air ducts so of course you can apply these things now uh, above air duct you can get the FSI temperature and import it uh, to uh, the glass and also the lower duct uh, the FSI with the tiddler and import both temperatures to uh, the uh, PV and then you can investigate it Okay. Okay, gentlemen. Uh, so this is uh, my tutorial about how to cool a PV using the air uh, duct uh, method. I think it is very uh, effective, and it uh, we used uh, steady state uh, in uh, fluent. I don't think that uh, if you use the transient, it will uh, affect the temperature. I think I I have to uh, use the transient simulation in Flavin, but it did not work with uh, this uh, method we only uh, use the steady state i think it is uh, a good approach for the uh, temperature i don't think that you will get a uh, high reynolds uh, number or you don't want to have to uh, use the uh, transient in Flavin. okay also the uh, answers coupling that we uh, have here uh, system count he used the uh, city state so I think it's work it works uh, very well a very good approach here is 54 and here is 30 this is pretty uh, good I think so gentlemen this is my tutorial about how to cool uh, the PV using air ducts or also you can use uh, the water techniques now we can use the water techniques and here for the other cases uh, you can uh, carry out the simulation for the above duct and get the FSI temperature between the duct and the uh, PV and then apply the solar radiation uh, exactly like the uh, okay if we have here duct we can apply the solar radiation uh, without any problem and here is the lower duct you just uh, carry out another simulation in fluent and get the FSI temperature uh, with this and then import the temperature of uh, this face and this face and apply the uh, solar uh, radiation without any uh, problems and of course you have to validate the data we have here the solar radiation and we have here uh, the temperature is around 54 okay and we have here uh, the temperature is lower than 50 it's around uh, 40 uh, uh, 47 I think yeah of course because uh, due to the effect of the air and 
the air duct here our air duct is not as the same as this air duct so the temperature and of course the uh, guest values I guess some values but I think that uh, we did a good approach okay okay gentlemen thank you very much for uh, watching this tutorial I wish it helps you uh, to carry out your simulations and your complex simulation using water techniques or air techniques thank you very much